Hello everyone, welcome to CNE, the daily newspaper analysis. So today we are back with the following list of topics to discuss. So let's start. The first topic says about the Jammu and Kashmir Delimitation Commission, which was recently challenged in the Supreme Court was uh, to readjust constituencies in the new Indian territory was directly rejected by the Supreme Court vote. So this Supreme Court dismissed the plea challenging the center's decision to constitute a delimitation commission for the UT of JNK under the provisions of the DA Act of 2002. So who were the petitioners? So they were Srinagar residents, Haji Abdul Ghani Khan and Muhammad Ayub Matu, who argued that the limitation cannot happen on the basis of 2011 census, but must be carried out as per 2001 census or await the first census after the year 2026. Okay, so therefore today we know about what is delimitation. So uh, the limitation means the act or process of fixing limits or boundaries of territorial constituencies in a country or a province having a legislative body. Okay, so therefore today we know that that recently the commission uh, directly come into prominence with the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Act and the S12 JNK state had 111 seats, 46 in Kashmir, 37 in Jammu and 4 in Ladakh and plus 24 seats reserved for the POK that is the Pakistan occupied Kashmir. So when Ladakh was curbed out as a union territory, JNK was left with 107 seats including the 24 from the POK. So the Reorganization Act increased the seats to around 114 that is 94 Jammu and Kashmir and besides the 24 reserved for the POK. So in the S12 state, the limitation of the parliamentary constituencies were governed by the Constitution of India and that of assembly seats was carried out by then state government under the JNK Representation of the People Act of 1957. Okay, so now since we can see that recently such number of seats has been increased and the delimitation of the seats has been carried out. So this was recently challenged which was rejected by the Supreme Court panel 2. Okay, so therefore it was in news. Chalo, next pe aate hai. Heritage bill. So we know that we have got various number of heritage in our country. Okay, so today India has got around 40 world heritage sites which includes 32 cultural sites, 7 natural sites and 1 mixed sites. Okay, and therefore approximately 3,691 monuments in the study of the archaeological survey of India are declared as monuments of national importance. Okay, so therefore today the vast heritage repository of India is recognized globally as a significant part of its unique cultural diversity. So today, the Constitution of India has divided the jurisdiction over the monuments, cultural heritage and archaeological sites based upon union state and concurrent list. Okay, so therefore today we have seen that we have got various number of heritage, be it cultural, be it natural, be it the intangible heritage. Okay, so today through the identity that what we have today, we can see that if I say about some of the world heritage site, okay, natural heritage sites, be it the Kajiraga National Park, Sundarbans, Valley of Flower National Park, the Western Ghats are basically some of the world natural sites that are having some of the greatest diversity in the whole world. Okay, but today we could see that such number of this heritage sites could be protected well and therefore the geosciences community has called upon for a broad panel of experts to power this heritage bill. Okay, so today even Assam is directly going with such number of heritage bill. So today even we can see that Assam is also focused towards conserving its respective heritage and therefore Assam Assembly uh, by around 2020 has also passed the bill to protect state heritage sites. Okay, so therefore today we know that Assam also has got all such number of historical elements which can be preserved in the coming times and today even we can see the recent panel saying about the Moidams of Charaido to be recognized as a part of the world heritage sites which could be equivalent to the Egyptian pyramids. Okay, so in this process we could see that even Assam is directly interested to come uh, to preserve uh, with respect to the central government to preserve every number of heritage basically in our country. Okay. Next, Millet International Initiative for Research and Awareness. So what is all this? So recently in India uh, is holding the presidency of the G20 that is from December 1 of 2022 to around November 30, 2023. And during India's time as G20 president, the country is committed to maintaining its focus on food security. 
And towards this goal, India plans to propose the launch of global initiative to encourage millet consumption and production known as the Millet Initiative, International Initiative for Research and Awareness, also known as the MIRA, M -I -I -R -A. Okay, so therefore this MIRA aims to coordinate millet research programs worldwide. Okay, and even we can know that the UN's declaration as the International Year of uh, Millets, that is of 2023, has been instrumental for India to be at the forefront in celebrating the millet year. Okay, so therefore this particular uh, body has got a mission to, or a vision, not a mission, it's a vision is to make millets a people's movement alongside positioning India as the global hub of millets. Okay, so therefore this things is basically news because India is directly getting a push to make India an important destination for every type of millet production in this respective world. Okay, so therefore this type of things has been going on that is saying about the Millet International Initiative for Research and Awareness. So you can see all this type of millets that we can find in our country. Okay. Chalo, next pay hai. Arrow India show exposes, uh, show causes India's cell confidence. So recently what we have seen that the Prime Minister inaugurated the 14th edition of Arrow India and the perception of the biennial expo Arrow India has challenged, has changed and today it is India's strength. So it just shows that not only showcases the scope of the defense industry, but also self-confidence of India. So PM Modi said that the country, which was the largest defense importer for decades, has now start, started exporting defense equipments to around 75 countries in the world. And this year's expo has the participation of more than 83 countries, along with 800 defense companies, which includes around 100 foreign and 700 Indian companies. So PM Modi, indigenous uh, light combat aircraft and aircraft carrier INS Bikrand as examples of India's success in self-reliance. Okay, so therefore today we have seen that how this year exhibition in Bengaluru has the participation of more than 80 countries, which is basically beneficial for India because India is directly expanding its defense market in the global world and it's now making India to be the main exporter of defense industry in the coming times. Okay, Chalo. next pay hai. Lastly, editorial Quasi Crystal. So what is this quasi-crystal and why uh, this was been discussed in this respective element? So scientist has discovered a third natural source of quasi-crystal. Okay. And this quasi-crystal also known as quasi-periodic crystal is a matter formed atomically in a manner somewhere between the amorphous solid of glasses that may be forms of metal and other minerals as well as common glass. So like crystals, quasi-crystals contain an ordered structure but the patterns are subtle and do not recur at precisely regular intervals. Okay, so therefore the American-Israeli scientist Dan Scatman discovered quasicrystals in the lab in 1982. So quasicrystals have poor heat conductivity which makes them good insulators. So in a nutshell, if I have to say, quasicrystals are physical lattices which with translational disorder that written local rotational symmetry. You can see in the respective picture. So unlike quasi-crystals, perfect crystals have both translational and rotational symmetry and are always close packed. So therefore, while no major commercial applications yet exploit properties of the quasi-crystalline state directly, quasi-crystals formed in compounds noted for their high strength and light weight, suggesting potential applications in aerospace and other industries. So these quasi-crystals can also be used in surgical instruments, LED lights, and non-stick frying pans. So therefore, we have got the uses even uh, recently, it was discussed with selective solar absorbers. Okay, so therefore, in solar uh, absorbers, also in the solar facilities, also we can directly use such number of quasi crystals that can be very much useful for us in the coming times because we are basically shifting our respective goal of making renewable energy sources from even solar, from even hydro, from even wind. Okay, so we want to reap the benefits of the solar uses. And therefore, these things which has recently been discovered was basically discussed under the editorial section. Okay, so this is all for today. We have this 5 dollar MCQs. Please do attempt these MCQs and do join our WhatsApp and Telegram channel for further updates. So that's all for today. Thank you and Jai Hind.